Talking Nightmare Radio, The Night Stalker. And this is actually an anthology movie, and it's actually a sequel from a previous Nightmare Radio film. And I actually quite enjoyed the original one, I gave it a 7 out of 10. So this is a collection of short kind of horror films that um, haven't been made specifically for this anthology. They've been curated and then the wraparound story is kind of put around them. So the wraparound story features this kind of female uh, late night radio DJ and she's kind of doing this show where she's talking about various different horror stories. The callers call in and kind of say a horror story, etc. But she's menaced by this uh, stalker who seems to have taken an interest in her and is maybe a little bit nearer than she initially thinks. And then of course we have all these uh, a variety of kind of um, stories. Um, I, I won't go into huge detail in regards to the stories. One thing I did like about the first one, it, it was very polished. It seemed very kind of like good production values are, are in that movie. And I think this is true of this movie, but not to the degree. I also think the actual st stories are, are less horrific and more kind of bizarre. The ones that stood out to me, uh, I would say there's, there's two that I thought were good. Um, and that, but one that I thought was okay, or maybe two that I thought was okay, and the rest were just kind of forgettable. Uh, the good one of, of, has its problems. It's kind of this like um, this guy who's watching this kind of TV sh uh, show, and it, all of a sudden, it kind of the the screen kind of goes static, and it looks like he's watching CCTV, and he's at his own apartment building where he sees this kind of masked slasher attacking this woman, and upon investigation and so that actually hasn't happened yet so he's able to kind of prevent it but then he's going to see other things in the tv uh, as well now that i liked it had a good setup it had no a more overt horror elements to it but it's incredibly short it's a very very short um short movie and i feel that one definitely needed to be expanded because i didn't feel like we got a good enough explanation about or didn't get any explanation about what was kind of going on so that movie to me needed more context but I, I i did like what we had the final story is about this vineyard that has special ingredients you might say to uh give their one a unique flavor and that's pretty good um that's a decent kind of effect relatively obvious about what's kind of happening to be honest with you but i kind of quite like the kind of the, the, the it's, it's kind of you know fun self-contained little story uh, so they were the two ones that I thought was the strongest. So there's one I thought was uh, okay, which is about the, this kind of um, filmmaker who's uh, scouting locations for this kind of his next horror film. And he's looking in this kind of particular kind of uh, abandoned hospital or, or sanitarium or something. And uh, of course, it's actually haunted this one. And the, the idea is very kind of classic, you know, modern horror, that one. And that was all okay. The location looked good. I thought the acting was fine. But it's let down by some very obvious kind of CGI effects. The ghost effects on this one. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a gore shot in it. But it's like um, uh, very kind of like goosebumps kind of style kind of VFX and kind of CGI. And it's also let down by one of the characters putting themselves into an incredibly dangerous uh, situation all by themselves. And it doesn't really make any sense why they would do that. Um... So they were the kind of like the two good ones and the one that was okay. There was another one that was okay at the beginning, the very beginning of the movie, which is this kind of like this intro one where this woman comes downstairs and there's kind of like this ghostly bride. Again, what we see on screen, it's kind of classic horror films, but there's just no context in it. And this is, I think, some of the, the problem with, with sometimes with anthologies is that it's this very little setup, very little characterization. What we saw on screen was pretty good. You know, it looked like it was part of a, of a, of a scene from an existing film. I don't know, but... It just, there was just no setup in it, so you couldn't get invested in the characters. There's just kind of like lots of ghostly stuff happening. Um, but then there's also some kind of like uh, ones where I felt the stories were kind of pointless. Uh, there's one about this, this foxes, there's this suburban uh, neighborhood where this wife is clearly very bored and she just becomes obsessed by these foxes. And then something weird happens at the end. I thought, I was thinking, well, I don't know. That one didn't really make any sense to me. Um, like, I won't go. With, I won't spoil it for you. But I was like, why? <laughs> why? Uh, where's where's every where's every every other person in this in these houses? It's bizarre. 
There's this other one where we have these two sisters in this car and um, they get into an altercation, you might say. That was from Australia, but the sounds of it, or New Zealand, and the audio was terrible. So it stuck out so badly. But then again, the story is pointless. It had some good VFX in regards to some gore, but the story just seemed pointless to me. Um, and then we have to talk about our wraparound story, where I, th you know, where we have this kind of stalker. Now I think the radio DJ did a pretty good job here. Um, you know, very much what you'd expect from a kind of like a, you know, Elvira-esque sort of style kind of horror um, host. If that makes sense. Um, but I think the guy she's playing off against, this kind of stalker, oh my God, his acting is so hammy. Uh, it's so hammy. And then uh, the this the kind of, I suppose, without spoiling, I think the final kind of face-off between these two is poorly handled. It, it's, it's just not filmed very well. And, um, yeah. Again, without spoiling, I'll, I'll just say you can kind of see what's happening and people's... The way they were dealing with things didn't seem particularly kind of realistic. Anyway, um, so you know it's it's a well produced anthology film. I think the movies are, uh, you know, for the for the most part well produced, but not as as good as the first in regards to its production value. I also think the stories in general are not as horror, if that makes sense. They're not as, as overtly horror as the first film, and this a lot of these films just seem more like off kilter or bizarre or you know macabre maybe but not necessarily horror um outside of a couple of them so and it, it just seems a little a little bit kind of like non-events to a degree um so it's it's okay it's not as strong as the first one the stories aren't as strong for the most well all of them really even the even the even the better ones i still feel have some issues and I don't think the um, the wraparound story works as well either. But it's still there is still some value to be had. Like some of the, as I say, the designs were good. I think the acting was was all uh, fairly good. Without kind of a couple of examples, and there is a, a fair mix of what the stories are. But it's not like the overt monsters and things like you got in the first film. I'll give this one a five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.